community borders have been open for a couple of weeks and in a couple of weeks the international borders are open so I've come down to the south of Spain to visit my cousin and to switch off after three months of working to see what things are like. First of all I'm going to try and get some breakfast in my favourite place and then make my way along the coast. And to avoid contamination, we now have these sauces served in eggshell boxes and this on paper. Mm. Breakfast finished, I'm now going to get maybe a little aperitivo and then go along the coast to Benal Malena to see my cousin. There's still a pretty healthy amount of people here, but no tourists. I feel a bit out of place. Pilgrimage to my favourite bar, the Antigua Casa de Guardia. So the plan now is to head down the coast to Ben Almadena to meet my cousin Ryan, an area which is usually famous for English expats and we're going to see how many are there. So the mask has to be worn at all times on public transport still in the country, whether that's on the train itself or if you're on a platform. I've been in this bloody thing since 6.30 in the morning. We just want to have some tapas and take it off. Safety first. March the 13th, Madrid went into full lockdown and this was nobody in and out walking around their houses unless you were going to the pharmacy or the shops. I was lucky that I could keep my shop going. Um, so I was in there every day, nine till five kind of thing, uh, by myself. And then the phase one came in, which was when you could start to go out at certain times of the day, at certain hours. Then the next phase that came in, which was pretty much free for all in Madrid, and the current phase is intercommunitary travel. But tourists currently still can't come. However, as I saw yesterday, the beaches have got a fair number of people on. I suppose all the locals here want to go and sit on the beach. I'm now heading to a town called Mijas, which is an old town, and see how that's looking. Mijas is a little Pueblo Blanco, which is usually the most touristy because of its proximity to where we are here on the coast. So I'm gonna get a local bus and try to avoid the donkey riding tours, if they're still even going anyway. Now, where the hell do I go? Now, since the phases have let up in Madrid, a lot of people have been walking around and making videos and showing these quieter spots. And even though they're quieter, the locals are still using them. So I was, I suppose you could say, lucky enough when I was working in Madrid to be doing deliveries. And I was able to walk around these spots and it was kind of chilling because there was not a soul out it looked like a zombie film. Um, so now there is life coming back, but it's going to be interesting to see what this Pueblo is like without the tourists. Uh, my cousin said that yesterday the coast is a lot quieter than usual, especially the restaurants. Most of them are just not open yet. And they are worried because they need that giddy money. left on the bus and it's very provincial, very small roads. This is exactly what I wanted. 
There's already more life here than I thought, and I can hear the donkeys. The donkeys are here. Tourism for Michas will be day trippers, exactly like me from, from the coast. Um, it seems pretty, pretty lively, but then I don't know what it's normally like. But if there are donkeys, there is hope. Taxi number 40. Aye. It's rather pleasant and I haven't even seen the town yet. There's a sanctuary and a cave. There's massive views. Not a bad start to Mijas. Just went around the most bizarre museum in my life about miniature things. Set in an old train tra uh, cabin style thing and contained the weirdest stuff. Things painted on rice granules on the tops of uh, nails, but everything super, 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 super tiny. Bonkers. Now, even though I have nothing to judge it on, I would imagine Michas is comparatively empty right now, given that my guidebook, and my guidebook, by the way, it's from 2009, the old rough guide. And even there it says it's very touristy, but not many people here. So perhaps that is worrying. That's a nice view. That being said, 2020 is certainly going to be a strange and quiet summer and a summer of local tourism and local activities. Uh, I was going to walk all the way up to a chapel, but it's miles up and I'm already a sweaty mess. I've not done this much exercise in months. So I'm going to head back down to the town. It's an amazing view. And try and find a nibble. Very nice. Directed by a lady who runs a cute little cafe to go to a place called Barmijas, and if not, anywhere around the bus station. So the cutlery comes fully sealed and the menus are there with these little things so you don't have to touch anything paper pretty classic spanish lunch of meat and tomato sauce and chips which saw me right um i'm now going to try and go back to the old town of benalmadena because there is a weird single man who's made a castle dedicated to christopher columbus which i wrote about in an article in a hipster magazine called The Dodo a few years ago. And I want to bloody see the thing. So let's see if I can get there. Yeah, it's quiet. It's very quiet. So this castle monument was built between 1987 and 1994. And it's the largest monument to Mr. Columbus in the world. And apparently it contains the smallest church in the world. Either way, it's bloody weird, and I hope it's open. Even more bizarrely, it was built by a surgeon called Dr. Esteban. Not an architect. Just a guy who loved art and history. As you do, make a palace. <laughs> Tourism counts for about 12.3% of the country's GDP and about 12.7 million jobs. So much like the locals around here, given that I work in tourism, I really want you guys back as well. I'm mortified. The bloody thing doesn't open Mondays or Tuesdays. And it's Tuesday. With that failure hanging over me, I'm going to head to Ben Alma in a town, have a cold beer, and wait for my cousin. Admitting defeat in a graceful way. Balls! This morning I'm making my way along the coast to Fuengirola, 
which is one of those words that even growing up became a synonym for sort of Brits abroad in Spain, along with Benidorm and Torremolinos and Magaluf and these places. So we're going to check out another legendary tourist hotspot. A little bit scruffy but it is a legit town with infrastructure lots of shops and there's a lot of people everywhere which is good to see but again are there tourists no probably not all the beach hammocks are completely devoid of people I'm not going to lie, it's quite nice to put my feet in the water. Dodgy to film though. <laughs> Dog, how's she going? Hey, hey. Did you want to kiss? She genuinely loves you, she's not like this with like she calls us out. Is it because you know I'm about as smart as you? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> what are you looking at? Oh, that's nice. Yeah, Nick, say hello, Nick. Hello. <laughs> it's morning. Oh, <laughs> not the morning. Good morning. That is going to be lunch. So, my mate Nick lives up in this little hillside idyll, replete with barbecue, dog, views, and a pool. <laughs> I didn't expect this. No, oh, you were a little happy cat. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> so Nick, you've you've made us beautiful feast. What what have you prepared so for us? We've got a slab <laughs> of uh, secreto ibérico, I think. Yeah, secreto ibérico. Ibérico. Um, some sweet uh, chili peppers done in the barbecue. Are they, are they, are they chili peppers? No, I think they're... <laughs> did I see chili peppers? Yeah. Sorry. Pimientos italianos. Pimientos peppers. <laughs> Pepper things. This is gonna... I don't think this is what Luke was expecting. And some chovy. <laughs> <laughs> Ali Oli. Would you say this is a tra traditional Mija star lunch? It's a traditional um, this house lunch. Nice. <laughs> that would be unique, but you've just spent the fucking day out in 1960s spaghetti <laughs> western. <laughs> <laughs> So we've come to the village of Cartama, where hopefully we're going to have the greatest meal of the trip at the Maison de Carlos. The churrasco is a thing. Yes. They put the cheese in oil for three months. I'm going back to Madrid this morning and sort of asking myself, what have I learned? What have I seen? And it is just a quieter coast. Um, you see a couple of Brits, but they're the ones who live here. And yeah, everything is just running on empty, at like 20% or something like that. Despite the lack of the foreign visitors, it is quite nice to see the locals out and about enjoying their newfound freedom after so many weeks stuck indoors. If from sort of start of July onward, when the borders are open, the tourists come back and breathe a bit of life back into the Spanish towns. So for now, I'm going to go back to Madrid and get on with my now free life.